Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today we're going to be taking a look at my original Facebook note for my 2012 mission trip in Greensboro, North Carolina. For those of you that might have complained about the structure of the previous notes, I learned my lesson and I started out the note by saying I'm going to describe the worst parts of the camp first so that we can end off on a big, giant, majestic climax. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We arrived at Sacred Heart the day before the camp started, since the adult drivers didn't want to be tired out before the camp started. And like last year, Julie was having trouble getting the rental vans from Enterprise. And I think I remember one year, I don't remember if it was this one or the last year, they went to go pick up the Enterprise vans and they only got like a small station wagon. And Mr. Cora just flatly said, yeah, that's not going to fit over 20 people. <laughs> so the one year they eventually decided to get a bus. And that was actually quite amazing. But thankfully they didn't have too many troubles in the recent years as far as I can remember. So we finally hit the road at 11 p.m., which is stupid late by our standards, stopping only a few times for food, and arrived at St. Agnes Catholic Church in West Virginia around 7.30 p.m. after Julie had to ask a random jogger for directions in the rain, too. During the car ride, I got to play WarioWare Twisted on Mike's Game Boy Advance SP, and we watched Ghostbusters. And when we got to the church, we played dodgeball in the gym with the other youth group staying the night there. But otherwise, nothing really eventful happened, except that I got walloped in the face with a dodgeball, and it caused me to lose my footing and fall to the ground. But despite the girls' panicking, I got right back up and continued the game and laughed it all off. On Friday, after we finished watching the summary DVD and the closing mass, we packed up our stuff and went to Dan's River Adventures to go tubing. Though I said it was decent at the time, looking back on it, I had a miserable time. I got sunburned pretty badly, and I was mostly just floating along by myself watching the beautiful scenery. Okay, so the reason why I hated Dan's River Adventure so much was because at the time I was still terrified of being in a watery setting and revealing my body so much. Back then I wore a basketball jersey, but even that felt like there just wasn't enough coverage. I've come such a long way since then. And I also just found it to be kind of boring. Like when I'm in the water, I like to be, you know, active, you know, doing something like a water slide or swimming around, not just sitting on a tube lazily going by. And the sunburns I got were horrible. Like, I remember I got one on my thigh that made it really hard to go to the bathroom for at least a week. So I definitely learned my lesson in the future and remembered to bring sunscreen. Intro and tour of the camp. Okay, now we're getting into it. As soon as we arrived at St. Paul the Apostle in Greensboro, North Carolina, we were greeted by a very enthusiastic staff and a writhing helium man that was as tall as the building itself. After we got our group picture taken and ran enthusiastically past the camera, and I think they caught that on the DVD too, we decided to stop by Wendy's to get some lunch. <laughs> And when Mr. Grajek took too long to take a turn, the driver behind us honked, and I jokingly yelled, Well, excuse me, princess, thankfully with the windows closed. As we walked through the side entrance of the building, there was a registration desk right there, plus a few side passages leading to the girls' sleeping quarters, some restrooms, and a drinking fountain. If we turned right after walking a few paces, we'd reach the gym, which was where the main programs took place. If we didn't enter the gym, we'd walk straight forward into the cafeteria, and to the right was a hallway leading to the guys' sleeping area. In the outdoor area, there was an open field where some teens played frisbee. And I don't remember if I mentioned this in this note or not, but there was a a big sign that said, no girls beyond this point. And I was like really determined that no one would break the rules because as I worded it, would you like it if a guy went beyond the tape that said no guys beyond this point? A couple of girls walked past the tape to try to call for one of their friends. They said, eh, 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 eh. it said no girls beyond this point if you want to get one of your friends. 
ask a guy to do it. But then to make sure that I wasn't sounding too mean, I was like, are you all having a good day? <laughs> right after that. So now to describe the various places in the building. The room where we slept was honestly the most comfortable of anywhere we've stayed in previous years, with the possible exception of the hotel beds at some of the conferences I was at. It was a simple square room with a green carpet, but combined with our sleeping bags and air mattresses, it was quite comfortable, and there were plenty of great moments in this room. <laughs> Another Paul at the camp, whom I referred to as my twin last year, since we looked so similar, would come into our room before it lights out and make us laugh hysterically. Mike would decide to brush his teeth right at lights out, or, after the lights went out, he'd turn on his Game Boy Advance SP and we'd hear, Yoshi! Before he'd laugh and say, Good night! And one thing I forgot to mention in this note is that this was also the infamous year where Justin had his really creepy alarm clock and it woke up everyone in the room except for Justin. So we let it go on for over an hour before he's like, why didn't you guys wake me up? And we were like, it's your alarm clock, dude. Why didn't you hear it? The gym had a huge stage with a giant screen for showing video footage, plus an interesting new backdrop. Along the walls were numbers that represented the group that we would each be in, meaning the work groups. There were 300 chairs set up in the center of the room, and in the back were the snack tables for each of our parish groups. There was also a foosball table and a vending machine, but I, I never ended up using them. In the cafeteria, there was a nursing station to the right. I think I meant to say to the left, because in the very next sentence I say, and a merchandise stand to the right, where we could purchase CHWC souvenirs, such as the new blue Taco Tuesday shirt, which I think I still have, and a red bandana, more on that later, plus the musician Lee Rossler got his own stand to sell his CDs, and I bought both of them, before I found out that my brothers bought both of them as well. There was also a piano next to the nursing station, and a chalkboard where the campers could write the answers to a question that the staff would ask every day. Some were silly, some were serious, and some were downright depressing, such as a few people having trouble with self-assurance or acceptance but at least it was a good attempt at getting people to be honest and a nice replacement for the lack of care cards. Care cards is the proper term for the affirmation notes that we received last year. If we walked straight through the cafeteria, we would reach an empty room where a parish group met for a group discussion on Monday night. Then through the glass doors would be the actual church sanctuary, which was where adoration and the rosary took place. And in all of the Catholic carts I've ever been to, I have never participated in the rosary because it was always optional. So you guys can tell me if I was a bad Catholic or not. Technically, we don't need to pray the rosary, so I'm not going to be a mortal sin, at least. This next section is called the Unique Camp. Greensboro was a very unique experience in many ways, and though I'll describe them in more detail later in this note, here are a few tidbits that set this camp apart from the others, and even if you compare it to later camps, some of this stuff still never happened. Four Corners no longer had corners, but it was still just as epic, if not more. They still called it Four Corners, though. Most of our tools were already provided for us, and we found out our work assignments ahead of time, which really helped on packing, and it helped me not be so, like, frazzled by all of the, oh gosh, I just found out my work project the day before we work. There were also far less painting jobs than usual. There were no longer special awards for teens that emphasized the epitome of service and awesomeness. They probably didn't want other teens getting jealous. Another thing that was removed were care cards. To make up for it, Julie made envelopes for a parish group, which didn't work out too well, because I think I only got like one or two affirmation notes, and most people didn't get any at all. And I brought my purple notebook for people to autograph and wrote affirmations, and I got 66 signatures. Teenagers were now in charge of evening transitions from silliness to seriousness. In the previous years, it would always be the staff members that would do that. So I think maybe their reasoning was if a teenager is telling them to shut up as opposed to some college students, maybe that'll like make them pay more attention because, I don't know, maybe there was a problem at one of the camps we didn't go to. And it worked. 
because like after the silly stuff would happen and we do like the meditation to get into the serious mode you could really feel the energy in the room just drop down to a crawl in like the best way possible they used metaphors of some of god's mind-blowing creations such as wind the sun water and fire ironically i had used a very similar metaphor previously about the wind Taco Tuesday was always a big deal, and now they actually had a song for it. And I think I still remember the song. I believe it was T to the A to the C to the O. It's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Teens were picked ahead of time for some of the activities rather than always trying to get volunteers. So basically, whenever they did a stage activity, the teens would know in advance who was coming up on the stage so it wasn't like can i have three volunteers for this and then they just pick random people out of the audience epic reunions minnesota's group joined us last year in prince frederick maryland and it was more mind-blowing than i can describe for most of them to come to the same camp yet again totally by coincidence too we did not coordinate that with each other I counted 18 of them off the top of my head, and there were probably more that recognized me, but I was totally oblivious, because it was a running joke at the camp about my atrocious face memory, to the point where I reintroduced myself to Annika three times. Also, Father Jeff returned as the priest, and even better, he was the director of the camp, and he signed my notebook, and I remember exactly what he wrote. Not that that's much of a thing to remember, because I still look at that notebook. He wrote, It is easier to catch flies with a teaspoon of honey than a teaspoon of vinegar. And I think that was his way of saying, like, if you want to correct people, do it nicely, because they'll take it better. He also gave his famous Five Truths homily. So you can just read the previous note if you want to know what that was all about. Team Building my work team consisted of Taylor, Kelly, Tom, Vanessa, Allie, and Amanda. Okay, so it was uh, not so much a work group as it was a lunch group this time around because our project was at a horse ranch that also had this giant forest. And so we really only met up for the team building activities and for lunchtime that being said i think we had a really great time at at lunch and a couple of the teenagers really enjoyed hearing the words of advice that i had to say so it was pretty decent not the best work team i've ever had but it could have been worse we went outside to play a few active learning activities. There was a trust board, and since no one else wanted to, I got on the board, crossed my arms across my chest, and I had to let the board lean and have my teammates keep me from falling over. Another fun activity we did was where each of us held a plastic half pipe, and we had to get a ball in a circle. We did incredibly well, and managed to get the ball around us way more than the minimum three times that the camp asked for. There was a helium stick where we raised the stick high enough into the air so that it had the potential of flying away, and with our fingers at the bottom of the stick, we had to get it to the ground. I had such deep concentration that I didn't even look directly at the camera, because I think they did film me doing that. The final activity worth mentioning was a group of huge boards with strings attached. Each teen would place each foot on the board, and they would have to coordinate their movements to start walking. I was their coach, and they did really well after my instructions. Also, I forgot to mention that it was really hot, and there were quite a few mosquitoes during this part, so I think maybe it wasn't as enjoyable as other years, but it was still pretty fun. After we were finished with active learning, we went into the cafeteria to ask some icebreaker-type questions, such as what type of personality we have and our gifts and talents. It was a great way for us to realize each of our unique communication styles so that it would be easier to talk during discussion time at lunch. Finally, after the questions, the staff asked us to yell brush every time they said paint in the instructions video to come. Unfortunately, none of the rules in the video applied to us, but they managed to turn even something as simple as spilling out excess paint on the grass into something hilarious, such as, no one wants bluegrass, Unless it's bluegrass, and then they made, made cricket sound effects. I actually laughed. Copper Top. One of the initial downers of the week was the fact that we did not, in fact, work as a team, but as a cluster of 40 people, and we had to take a 30-minute bus ride to our site. 
It worked out, though, as I couldn't have asked for a better project. Coppertop Life Learning Center was an organization that specialized in teaching kids with physical and mental disabilities to ride horses, and I also did arts and crafts. At one point, I was able to help a girl named Abby stay on her horse. I got to talk to her about God a little bit, and I told her something along the lines of, When you get older, people will try to tell you that you're not pretty enough, but I want you to know that God made you beautiful. Never forget that. I really hope she hasn't forgotten that, because she's probably, I think by now, probably like in her late teens, so I really hope she's doing well. I also got to ride one of the horses on the last day, and there was also a, a soccer field where sometimes the kids would want us to play with them. As much as there was a lot of physical labor, there was also some just getting along with the little kids. When I wasn't working with the horses, it was flat out manual labor. We're talking pretty much every kind of yard work you can imagine, from mowing the lawn, weeding, chopping logs and tree trunks, carrying packages of dog food to a trailer, weed whacking, pushing wheelbarrows, taking out nails and stables from boards, washing the trailers, etc. And I loved every minute of those sweat-covered, glorious moments. And I kept saying to my teammates, the sweater the better. If anyone on my old work team from last year was reading this, this phrase may sound very familiar to you. I can't think of anything particularly memorable while working at the ranch, but there was a few interesting scenarios. I got to ride in this car thing called a gator. (laughs) Celeste and I sang a duet while pulling out the staples, and I talked about God to some of the teens while we were in the woods clearing out the path. And something I forgot to mention in this note is that they had this really strict policy about teenagers not being able to use the electrical equipment even if they were skilled on their own so that meant that none of the teenagers were allowed to mow the lawn so I was like I think that's a little bit excessive as I think teenagers are more than capable of mowing the lawn so I was like well if none of them can do it I guess I will and it was horrible it was one of the worst lawnmowers I had ever done and I had to ask one of the other adults to finish it for me because I was like I have I don't have the strict the strength to keep this up. When it was time for lunch, we had Uncrustables, granola bars, apples, ham sandwiches, Gatorade, Capri Sun chips, and pretzels. A boy around the name of 12 by the name of Austin joined us during every discussion, and for someone so young, he contributed quite a bit to our Catholic questions, even though he wasn't Catholic himself. And he also had Asperger's syndrome, but yet he was quite high-functioning. The bus rides were a mixture of emotions. There were times when I had a wonderful time, and some of the girls asked me to share my faith journey story. I don't remember what prompted that, but I think it was probably because I was like talking about God so much that they wanted to know how I got into that like positive mindset, and they took a (laughs) vid, and they took a video of me mimicking the carpenter commando from last year who mimed firework in front of a mirror and i think that's on facebook somewhere so if it is i'll have to see if i can put that into the video and they got into a dance party right on the bus i got to talk to about katie or i got to talk to katie about god on the bus this seems to be a running theme here Although I also had some times where I felt kind of sad and didn't really care about the music. In fact, I was so sad that I just said, Guys, can we just have a moment of silence, please? And I forgot to mention the funny stories that happened uh, once we got to the shower facility. So, as it turned out, there were 40 people overall. But of those 40 people, I believe it was 31 of them were girls so that meant that the when we got to the facility where we were meant to shower the line for the girls was so long that it like it started out where the doors were and for the guys they had the six teenage boys take their showers first and then the three adults that were chaperones would take theirs second and At one point, one of the adults got so impatient with the guys because the girls had already gotten through like half of their line and the guys were like still taking their time. So the adult leader pounded on the door and he shouted, what are you guys doing in there? Putting on makeup? And then once we got into the back room where we would like wait and sometimes they'd play games while waiting for the other people to finish up their showers, 
One of the girls on my work team came up to me and she held out her leg and she said, my leg is so smooth after I finish shaving. You want to touch it? And I was like, uh, no thanks. I also remember I was having so much trouble combing my hair that one of the adult females was like, oh, take my, take my, uh, I forgot what it's called, but those things that women open up when they're putting on their lipstick or their eye gloss and I had to use that to comb my hair. So, at the time, I was kind of like, uh, get me out of here, because this is a very awkward situation. Even weirder was when, for some reason, I was in charge of looking through the girls' showers after they finished showering, and picking up, like, bits of hair and stuff that they had maybe left behind, and I was like, girls have messy shower rooms? And the adult female was like, are you kidding? Girls have hair and shaving cream and makeup all over the place. So that was a nice learning experience for me. Meals. Meals were very interesting, shall we say. I was late for most of the dinners. In fact, we were so late one day that the camp had to reschedule both dinner and the adult meeting for Four Corners. I mean, I couldn't really help it. I was in a group of 40 people, and we were on a bus, and you know how girls are in the shower, so it was uh, very interesting. But the mornings were very, very good. If I can remember correctly, some of the food we had were burgers on Hamburger Thursday, tacos on Taco Tuesday, plenty of fruit, yogurt, salad, again, I probably didn't eat the salad, macaroni, rice, corn, green beans, pudding, fudge bars, cereal, French toast, and probably more that I forgot about. I was generally so overwhelmed with joy that the Minnesota people were there that it actually took me eons to eat. I didn't sit at the same table for every meal like I usually do, to, due to my lateness at meals, but I enjoyed my company, especially Andy, Andy with an I, because she's female, whom I will discuss later due to her amazing impact on the trip. She was actually so amazing that not only did she keep her faith after the camp, but she eventually went into the convent. So yay for someone who actually kept their Catholicism. And one moment I forgot to mention the two moments I forgot to mention in the cafeteria that were really funny was one of the girls accidentally spilled juice all over me <laughs> one morning. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad. Like, it was more of just like a tiny little spill where I was like, eh, it's nothing. I'll just get a paper towel. And she was so apologetic. She was like, I'm so, 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 so sorry. I'm going to give you a big hug, and I really hope you're not mad at me. I'm like, it's just juice. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. And I also happen to remember that she was almost as tall as me. So that's a good way of remembering it. And another thing that happened was one of the, the nights, the entire Minnesota group decided to play this game called Zumi Zume, where they would like tap their legs twice and then clap twice. And again, with 96 people, it was quite a game where they would go Zumi Zume, Zumi Zumi. Zoomy, zoomy, one, one, and then like the next person would have to say that, and then go to another person, and it was basically like an elimination round. And the camp staff, they were like trying to enforce the lights out, but they were enjoying what the Minnesota people were doing so much that they said, we'll let you guys finish this round first, because this is just too entertaining. On Thursday morning, however, I didn't have such a good time at the meal. I got sick from the egg burrito that I actually threw up twice and had to sleep through mass and miss one of the five truths as well, which really got to me. But at least I heard it before and eventually heard it again at 2016's camp. By the time the guys woke me up after mass to get their stuff from our room, I felt much better and was able to go to work after all. In fact, I was so determined to go to work that after the guys woke me up and said, are you still working? I was like, heck yeah. And I quickly grabbed my stuff and I ran into the parking lot and got on the bus just in time. It was great how much support Claudia gave me and Rachel, being the nurse, was able to confirm that I didn't have a fever. It just amazed me how much people cared about my well-being. My gosh, what did my 11 years in the past self go through if he was that happy about people just saying, are you okay? Sheesh. Daily Mass. Every time Father Jeff celebrated the Mass, every homily except one talked about a truth. You're not important. You're going to die. Life is hard. It's not about you. And you're not in control. I don't want to try to explain the meaning of every truth in this note, but I can say I learned this much. 
Father Jeff said that he didn't like it when people make him go ahead in a line at stuff like weddings simply because he's a priest, but that we should lower ourselves to the level of servants and always put the needs of others ahead of our own. The evening programs. Although service is a huge aspect of CHWC, some Catholics also want to learn more about their faith, express it, or simply have fun, and the evening program was all of the above. There was simply so much content that I may not be able to describe it all in this note, but here are some of the basic things that were shown, and later in the note I'll divulge some specific awesome events. The Carpenter Commandos were, as usual, hilarious, performing the traditional salute, Hey, Carpenter Commandos in training! And we'd reply, Hey, Carpenter Commandos! I already showed off their motions in a previous video, plus the hand motions. They showed a few silly videos, such as one that had a bunch of weird signs that had mistakes, such as entrance only and no entry signs right on top of each other, or a small patch of grass with a sign that said, Keep off the grass. They would also have activities that involved the guys and the girls to comp competing to see which gender was better, such as being tied together with a bungee cord to pick up apples with their mouths and get them to the middle. So to be more specific, they divided this into the guys would do it and then the girls would do it next, where one guy was tied on one side and the other on the other. So like when one guy moved to the right, it would like be pulling the other guy, like along with him and they'd have to grab the apples with their mouths and then go back to the middle and put them in. A competition to pull off each other's socks, a game where they would zoom in on a particular type of food and the contestants had to guess what the food was, a game where the participants would wear headphones and try to hum the song being played, I was the first person to guess Don't Stop Believin', and finally, the last activity I can remember is the participants had to shake off a bunch of winter clothes as fast as possible, and Jasmine won the game in maybe a fraction of a second, and they captured that on the summary DVD. The winners got to spin the prize wheel and get free CHWC merchandise. There were plenty of skits, including one where people try to give Jesus a bunch of presents and gifts, and Jesus closes with, All I wanted for Christmas was you. Another one, the adult skit, was where Mike, along with two other adults, would get behind these displays of midgets and do the motions of the midgets' feet, and another adult would be standing behind them doing the hand motions, and they would dance, run, sway, and whatever else they could think of to a bunch of pop culture songs, including A Whole New World. Mike's facial expressions were absolutely hilarious, and though only part of it made it onto the summary DVD, the entire performance is available on YouTube. So I will probably have that overlaying with this um, discussion so that you can see it for yourself. There were plenty of inspirational videos, including one of a guy with a red bandana who saved people from a burning building during 9-11. And I managed to get my hands on a red bandana before the camp started, so I figured that perhaps it was a sign from God that I, or someone close to me, would be able to work wonders in that manner as well. There was a video about a blind man who was able to shoot hoops when his brother tapped the basket with his cane, and another about a former CHWC camper named Katie that started an organization to raise money for kids in, I believe it was Uganda, and got to visit them as well. They were truly moving and may have been some of the best moments of the camp. Though I don't know if anyone can ever replace the candy man from last year, CHWC's next mascot was a hippie. She threw flowers to random audience members and would say stuff like, Love makes the world go round! and spin a hula hoop in the meantime, and she was never very good at it, and gave us videos on how to find our inner hippie, such as showing us the dangers of texting and walking, and a few pictures of when she took the hippie symbol to various work sites. And Mr. Grajek, one of the adult chaperones, he was very critical about this hippie, because he claimed that he used to be a hippie, because he did at least three hitchhiking trips across America, and he said, that's nothing like how real hippies act. Catholic trivia was kind of like Jeopardy, except with multiple choice, to train us in our Catholic faith. It's not just a mission trip, it's a Catholic experience. I actually wrote that, by the way. And though some of them seemed remarkably easy, I'm glad that they were able to do a bit of evangelizing during the experience. Lee Rossler was an amazing musician, though I have yet to listen to the CDs I bought for him. That still applies today, unfortunately. 
He played a few moving songs, such as Awake My Soul and even a song about his drummer, Ryan Beck. And they actually put that on the summary DVD, but even if they hadn't, I can remember it vividly. It went, Ryan Beck, what you know about that? Just know that I got your back forever. And that was the whole song, <laughs> just repeated over and over again. Speaking of music, we heard plenty of familiar songs, mostly popular culture, such as Don't Stop Believin'. The Michiganders once again stood on their chairs during the line about South Detroit. And even Santa Claus is coming to town in July with really, really incredible heat. They also played a nice variety of Christian music, both old and new, so that it wasn't the same old rehash that everyone knows. On Monday evening, one of the staff members named Katie spoke about how we need to zero in on the positive since the theme was Zero In, Live to Give, and the theme song was really rocking. My brother Matthew especially had to download it onto his iPod because he was like, my gosh, this is so much better than the theme songs you described at previous camps. Because at the previous camps, the theme song was very low-key and, like, you couldn't really dance to it. Like, you get... Last year's theme song, which was, I want to live my life uncovered. I want to be more than a number. And all I need is your love. And then, you know, the previous one, Caden's Life with a New Rhythm, was, I want to dance to the rhythm of God. I want to be more lifted up. I hear the holy song, and my heart beats to the rhythm. So you see how they were so low-key, and Zero In had, like, an electric guitar, and it went... And my brother was like, such an improvement. And Father Jeff spoke about how we need to receive as much as we give. It really helped reiterate what I've been trying to say on Facebook for an eon and a half. Miscellaneous awesome moments. Oh, this will probably make you all laugh. Vanessa tried to braid my hair at one point during the trip, which I refused at the time, but in 2018's camp I eventually let Anne do that to my hair. And another girl wanted me to put it into an upward ponytail. I did put it into a ponytail, just not an upward one. While shopping for our group snacks, I put Butterfingers on the list twice. Danny formed a negativity pact to counter my positivity pact and would pretend to be negative the entire trip, even though in reality he was even more positive than me because I think I was in depression at the time. And Danny was like always complaining about everything, but in reality I think it was just like him just being silly. A lot of my old traditions from last year were retained. I gave triple high fives for Jesus, high fives to fellow epicers, that is, other people who wore epic shirts. I was able to bring two epic shirts to commemorate the occasion, and it helped me to connect with the campers. Andy, again, with an I, because she's female, because you know I have... Uh, a friend named Andy, who's a male, was an absolutely amazing person to hang out with during my spare time. She was one of the most enthusiastic people I met at the camp, and we talked more than any other out-of-stater. So, I am really downplaying in this note, but it seemed like every other minute at the camp, she would somehow find me, and we'd somehow start, like, both getting super high-octane excited about what God had done for us, and what we did on the work projects and at one point we even like one of the teens in my group Amanda was sitting on one side of me and Andy was on the other and we were talking about adoration and just how mind blown we were how even like the silhouette of the cross of Jesus was powerful and Amanda fell asleep through the whole thing so <laughs> I wonder if we were talking so much about theology that it bored her and again Keep in mind, this is the same Andy that went into the convent, so I'm glad to hear that at least one person at the camp actually took their faith seriously. I was so impressed by her willingness to be so kind and brighten up my day that when we were given cross necklaces that were divided in half and were asked to give one half to the person who gave us the most or impacted us the most, I gave my half to her. I hope she still has that. 
I got to imitate Harry Potter to a few of the Minnesotans, as usual. Michael and Matt got into a high-five contest with Isaac, one of the staff members, and both of them got nine high-fives. During Friday's closing program, Isaac announced to the entire room that Michael and Matt both won a can of corn autographed by the staff. Another interesting thing about Isaac was that he was the heartthrob of the staff for all of the girls because he had that sugar bowl haircut. And like the way he talked, I guess, was like very <gasps> to the girls. And on the final night, when the staff was like giving their goodbyes and like closing messages, he was like, well, I'm hoping that I can be called to the priesthood. And the whole female audience was like, ah. <laughs> so yay for their dreams being ruined. Although I didn't get to talk to them too much, it was great to have discussions with Michael and Kyle and to receive their energetic high fives every time I passed them. Justin and I found an incredible picture of a bunch of colors scribbled onto a paper with crayon, and I said that it was a picture of heaven. And uh, I edited this in later to my Facebook note, but uh, during lunchtime, the question that CHWC gave us was, we were asked, who do you consider to be a disciple of Christ? And Allie, one of the teams in my group, said that it was through me. So that's three years in a row that someone said, Paul, I see God in you. The Light Sticks. Thursday evening's program not only allowed the residents we worked for to give testimony about the awesome jobs we did, and I think our resident actually came too, but the staff let us have some foam sticks with lights that changed color and we waved them in unison with the man and woman on the screen. It looked absolutely mind-blowing when we viewed it later on the summary video, and it was a great showstopper to end the weekend. But this note still has a few more awesome happenings to wrap it up. Eucharistic Adoration On Tuesday night, we were given the opportunity for the Blessed Sacrament to be exposed in the sanctuary, and we could kneel, fall prostrate, stand, or whatever pose was appropriate for the worship, and spend eight minutes in silence. I sat at the very back of the room, crying my eyes out and giving Jesus all of my struggles and my relationship woes. He later reassured me of how much he loves not only me, but the people that I struggled with. And I came to the epic realization that even the shadow of his cross proclaims his love. I actually remember exactly what I was crying about. And that's that, uh, that friend that I told you about that I was in a toxic friendship with had broken it off. And this was like the final time because she ended up unfriending me four different opportunities. And it was just, I think it was like subconsciously weighing me down the whole camp. And that's why Kyle mentioned that he was like, uh, Paul, I've noticed that you're not as enthusiastic as usual. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like having the time of my life. But I think he was subconsciously picking up on the vibes of me being sad that she's out of my life. Of course, now I'm overjoyed. But back then it was devastating. Four Corners. I can't really go into too much detail on Four Corners since I was a candle holder and I'm sworn to secrecy about anything said to me. Honestly, I don't remember most of the stuff I heard, but oh well. But I can give you a basic synopsis. Before Four Corners began, they gave each of us plastic candles, and when we did an examination of what we were struggling with at the moment, we were asked to raise our candles if the statement applied to us. It made me realize how much hurt I've actually been feeling in my life and how God was willing to heal me. Shortly after a bunch of other powerful videos, including one about Jesus' death and another about the joys of reconciliation, all of us candle holders, which included teenagers this time around, another way that this camp was unique, walked silently out of the gym, picked up a candle and sat anywhere we wanted in the cafeteria and we were asked to listen to the troubles of the teens, and in some cases the adults, and pray for them. I must say that I felt a sense of purpose after this night, and it was especially wonderful when Danny came over, and he assured me that everything work would work out in the end with my current trouble. Besides Andy, he was probably the biggest influence I had on the trip. And again, I probably wanted to be humble, but another teenager, I remember his name being Thomas, came and asked me something. I couldn't tell you what he said, even if I wanted to, because I totally forgot. 
but he wrote in my notebook later that he felt like God was literally speaking through me and it wasn't even my own words that I was telling him. So whatever I said, I'm glad that I made a difference. This year, reconciliation and adoration we had reconciliation before. What are they talking about? So that people could reflect on in front of the Blessed Sacrament or relieve themselves of the burdens of their sins. The Four Corners wasn't as mind-blowing and revolutionary as it was for me in previous years. I definitely felt like God was able to work through me in wondrous ways that night. What I learned, and those of you who are intuitive types are probably going to be like, about time, Paul. Though CHWC didn't completely revolutionize my life as it did in previous years, I did learn a few things. I learned that it's important to zero in on the positive in every situation, to find someone to lean on in times of trouble rather than hold everything in, and to focus on my favorite Bible passage from the Gospel of John, which got read on the stage by who else but Andy. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, and he laid down his life for his friends. I also forgot to mention that this was the year where the poem was read. You know, the the poem where it starts out being really pessimistic when it's read out, but then when you read out each statement of the poem in reverse order, it's actually a positive affirmation. So what I think I'll do is after I do my usual thanking my patrons, I'll just end the video with that video so that you can see exactly what caused all of us to start being mind blown and clapping simultaneously. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my patrons, Matthew Rakowski, Sploon Ghost, Splat Cat, and Scooter Doodle for your financial contributions. The link will be in the description if any of you are able to join my Patreon. Hopefully you enjoyed this note. Let me know which stories were completely new to you because that's the main reason I'm reading out these notes and which stories were your favorites. And until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye. God cares for you? No. The truth is, God doesn't care about people. I refuse to believe that we can hope in him. Can't you see that the fighting, the hate, the violence will one day extinguish his followers? Make no mistake, to truly lead them, a loving God wouldn't allow mankind to suffer so much. What causes so many to believe in him? Foolishness. It is foolishness. Won't God continue to ignore the evil things men do? God can't hear us. You're wrong when you say God can. But I know we can fix things on our own. Don't be fooled into thinking God cares. Or maybe it's time to look at things another way. God cares. Don't be fooled into thinking we can fix things on our own. But I know God can. You're wrong when you say God can't hear us. The evil things men do continue to ignore. God won't. Foolishness? Is it foolishness to believe in him? What causes so many to suffer so much? Mankind wouldn't allow a loving God to truly lead them. Make no mistake, his followers will one day extinguish the fighting, the hate, the violence. Can't you see that we can hope in him? I refuse to believe that God doesn't care about people. No, the truth is, God cares for you.